Hello, I've got here Yamaha P45, P115, P255 and DGX660. If you're looking at buying a reasonably priced digital piano from Yamaha, it's likely you've already encountered this particular jumble of product codes and wondered which one's going to suit my playing level the best. If you're a total beginner, you might not want to waste money on something that has loads of features that you won't use. On the other hand, if you're an experienced player or a returning player, you might not want to go so cheap that you miss a vital feature that you've been used to or that you really need. You might also be a beginner or have a child that's a beginner and you want to buy something that's going to last the entire way through their learning journey. I show people these very models here in the shop every day. People of all playing standards. In this video it's my mission to help you decide which one is going to suit you. Take a look at the ePianos website for the latest deals and offers on Yamaha digital pianos and keyboards. Delivery is fast and free across the UK. Very first thing I should say about all of these models is they all have what we call weighted keys. Piano style weighted keys. That's to say when you push a key down on one of them there's a mechanical resistance. They feel heavy to the touch, just like your nan's old piano, just like traditional piano. They all have that feature and they are also all 88 keys long, just like a traditional piano. So complete beginners that come into the store and they're looking at one of these models, usually for budget reasons, starting off looking at P45, P115. Now, in almost every case, complete beginners looking and hearing P45, P115 immediately recognize P115 sounds better. This is because the speakers themselves are larger, but also the sound generation of the, the piano sound is much improved on P115, so it's more realistic, it's much softer on the ears. P45 does have a bit of a shrill, tinny sound to it because of its small speakers. Complete beginners also tend to like the fact that you can record what you're playing on P115 and you cannot record what you're playing on P45. Now I can't bash the P45 too much because for how much it is it's a very good piano granted but what I'm pointing out is most beginners, even complete beginners that come and hear them side by side say yes P115 is my preference because it sounds so much better I like the fact that you can record and it's not really too much more expensive, about £100, just over £100 more expensive. And if you're a beginner and you're wondering, am I going to notice a difference? The answer is absolutely yes. Now, if you want to see a much more detailed comparison of these two models, look in the description below for the link to the video where I've got them side by side and I go into some detail about the differences. So this complete beginner has come into the store and they're looking at P115, P45, and they've decided P115 is worth the extra money, definitely better, a worthwhile investment. The other model that then comes into play because its proximity in price tends to be DGX660 just here. And at first glance, have a look at it, there's loads of buttons on the front. It might give the impression that there's lots of things on there that would be wasted for a beginner. It's something you're wasting your money on, all those features you may not use. But the crucial thing to understand when you're comparing DGX660 and P115 is they're both designed to offer different ways of learning. P115 is very traditional. It's relatively simple. You turn it on and it plays like a piano. That's it. There's, there's a few other things you can do but it's simple. There's almost nothing else but piano on there. DGX660, on the other hand, is designed to offer you a much more modern way of learning. What do I mean by that? Well, as well as having piano style keys and the full length of the piano, like P115 here, it's got a computer built into it where you can play along with backing tracks, backing bands, you can interact with the music that plays out of the speakers. It's got a little screen on the front that actually shows you music. You can connect it to your iPad. There's a companion app as well that allows you to play your iTunes collection through the speakers, which is fantastic. There's a whole load of extra things you can do with DGX. So if you've got to the point, uh, the price point where you're comparing P115 and DGX660, don't think of them as similar types of pianos just because they're quite close in price they're actually very different types of pianos you have to think about how you want to learn 
because some people say, I like to learn in a traditional way, I think all the extra features are a distraction, which is absolutely fine. On the other hand, people look at what DGX can do and they might say, oh, actually, that's going to keep me really interested and engaged and keep me practicing, which is exactly what it's designed for. But as you can see, it's horses for courses. It's a very personal choice. So have a look, but think about how you want to learn. That's probably what's going to swing you DGX way or P115's way. If you want to see a much more detailed comparison, again, there's a link below where I've got these two side by side and we'll go through all the differences that there are between them. Now, if you've been researching uh, this range, you've probably noticed P255 under here is quite a lot more expensive. It's about the thousand pound mark. So it's a bit of a jump up. Now, why is that? The reason is the P255, it reaches a much more professional level. The key mechanism used is much more lifelike. The speaker power is doubled from P115. And basically the piano sound has much more variation. Now, uh, if you are a beginner, you might be thinking, well, am I going to notice the difference for that extra money? Am I going to notice the difference between P115 and P255? And the answer, the honest answer is straight off the bat, probably not. But six months down the road, for example, if you've been practicing lots and having lessons, then yes, you are going to notice the difference. And why would that be, you might ask? Well, imagine you're taking up painting and the first picture you painted was of a tree. You could probably do a pretty convincing picture of a tree, but there probably wouldn't be much shading, much shading variation, much subtlety in your picture of a tree. And it's very similar when you're learning to play piano. When you start off, you don't know how to put light and shade into your playing and you don't realize the difference that playing with feeling and emotion and variation makes. It takes time to develop subtlety and nuance on the piano, but when you have learned that, perhaps six months down the road if you're practicing, that's when you will notice the difference in between these pianos. Straight off the bat, most people do not notice it, but you get better, you improve, that's when you begin to notice the difference. So what kind of beginner plumps for the P255? Well, it tends to be the type of person that wants to buy once, as they say. That's to say they get they buy something that's going to last throughout their entire learning journey. Or it might be a parent buying for a child and they say, I want to buy a piano that's going to help them from the start. But it's also when they've grown up and they moved out, they can take it with them. It's going to satisfy them even when they have improved and learnt that subtlety that we were talking about. So P255, it's a professional standard piano. It's going to last a long time. Um, the other ones, P45, P115, a type of thing that you may find yourself wanting to upgrade from um, six months to a year down the line. Now, if you want to see a more detailed comparison of P115, P255, I've made a video with them side by side, which you can watch. The link is in the description below. OK, so what about if you are an experienced player already or you're a lapsed player and you're returning after a period of... Um, of not playing piano, where do people like that tend to go in this range? Well, if even a total beginner can tell the difference in sound between P45 and P115, you can rest assured if you are an experienced player, you're, you're probably going to be disappointed with P45, in all honesty. P115 is much, much improved and much more variation in the input that you can put into the piano. Most experienced players rule out P45 within minutes of hearing it. Now, I hate to bash the poor old P45, but it's a budget instrument. It's good for the price, but most experienced players say, no, that's below my level. I want P115 at least. So getting to P115's price point, uh, then the question is usually, well, the similarly priced DGX660, which one's going to be best for the experienced or returning player? And again, this depends because, as we said before, they offer different things. DGX is going to give you um, backing bands to play along with, wireless connectivity with your, your iPad, iPhone. It's got a six-track recording studio in it. Um, P115 is basically just turn on and play piano. There are a few other bits you can do, but generally that's what it's designed for. So if you're a creative 
a player and, or a songwriter or a singer, then it's DGX 660 is most definitely for you. In fact, it's even got a microphone input. Um, backing tracks, recording studio, um, you rec take your recordings as a WAV file onto USB as well. But if you are, for example, a classical pianist and you just want to play ordinary piano, no backing track or anything like that, B115 is designed for that purpose. Just turn it on and play piano. So if you think you're going before either DGX or P115, there's a link in the description below where I've got them side by side and I do an in detail comparison of them. So again, experienced players, returning players um, that don't want the bells and whistles and extra functions of DGX, they may be asking themselves, you may be asking yourself, well, P115, P255, is it worth going up to around a thousand pounds with uh, P255? Let me explain what the basic differences are. The design concept is the same in that it's just turn on and give me piano, please, not a great deal else. But it's the constituent parts that are basically upgraded. The key mechanism is upgraded to a more professional standard. The quality of the sound samples are improved up to a more professional standard. The speaker power is also improved as well. Experienced players who come into the store and they try these side by side almost immediately comment how much heavier the keys are. Now, I'm not saying that they're too heavy to, to touch or anything like that, but P255 has an improved key mechanism. There's more resistance in it. A lot of people say it's more like sitting at the face of a concert grand piano. That's what you get with P255. It's worth repeating that all of these models have what we call piano weighted keys, but P255 is Yamaha's next level up when it comes to feeling just like a traditional grand piano, giving a slightly heavier touch and bringing that playing experience a little bit closer to the real thing. This key mechanism improvement is noticeable with experienced players, and if you don't get the chance to try them both, that's what most people that come into the shops say. It is more like the real thing to play. If you are a gigging musician, a performing musician, you might also find it very useful that it's got a what we call a live controller on the front here. I, I go into some detail with this, but basically you know that when you play live uh, in different venues, you need to control the EQ instantly. Pianos can be very boomy on the bottom end um, or too uh, screechy on the top end. There's a live controller on P255. Some people consider that an absolutely essential feature for performing live. So I hope that's been informative for you. If you have any questions whatsoever, leave them in the comments section below, or you can just get in touch with us on the phone or via email. But for now, thanks very much for watching. Bye-bye.